everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. We got a huge show tonight. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna give it away right now. We got Zendaya. What, what, that, um, what? We got Zendaya, and we got Father Jim Martin, a Jesuit priest, coming on here tonight. Former chaplain of the Colbert Nation. I hope he will forgive me for the jokes I'm about to do. It's Groundhog Day, everybody. Like every other day since March 12th. But today is actual Groundhog Day, which, for no apparent reason, America seeks weather prophecy from meteorological prognosticator Punxsutawney Phil, seen here with no idea what the hell is going on. It's been a rough run since last Groundhog Day, so we all had our fingers crossed for some promising rodent forecasting from Phil and his council of top-hatted hog fondlers. <laughs> but sadly, our hopes for spring were spurned because Phil saw his shadow, which means there will be six more weeks of winter. For the love of God, Phil! I can't take it. I don't want to be stuck inside six more weeks staring at snow outside the window. I am ready to be stuck inside staring at rain outside the window. But there is, there is a chance that Phil's not given us the straight dope here. You see, stick with me, in 2020, Phil predicted an early spring, but as the AP pointed out, he didn't say anything about a pandemic. Wait a second. Is the Associated Press implying that America's preeminent magical woodchuck is not a board-certified epidemiologist? <laughs> I hope they can back that up with something. The ceremony was a little different this year. Due to the pandemic, instead of any groundhog groupies, the audience was packed with cardboard cutouts. Well, then that means there were no proper witnesses. I demand a hand recount of the groundhog. Stop the shadow. Storm Gobbler's Knob. Also, change that name. It sounds really dirty. Make it something nicer like Dribbler's Crotch or Stickler's Lick. or Duffler's Munch. There's big news today from the business world and the regular world too, because Amazon announced that their CEO, Jeff Bezos, will be stepping down. Before leaving office, he will be cocooned in bubble wrap and put in a box eight times his size. Maybe throw in a little SD card or something like that. Bezos is the richest man in modern history worth $196 billion. That's billion with an illion. And he's had a really good year. In fact, his worth climbed so much between March and September of 2020 that he could have given all 876,000 Amazon employees a $105,000 bonus and still have been wealthy as he was before the pandemic. Key phrase there, could have given. So on one hand, he's an obscenely rich plutocrat who hoards wealth as those employees not yet replaced by robots have to pee in bottles for lack of bathroom breaks. On the other hand, he greenlit flea bag. So, I mean, in his absence, Bezos will be turning over the reins to the company's longtime cloud computing boss, Andy Jassy. Now, I know nothing about Jassy other than his last name rhymes with sassy. And sassy Jassy sounds good to me. His first name's Andy, so he's Randy Andy the Sassy Jassy. <laughs> Need a cup of coffee after that. It's been a pretty good show so far. So far, Doing pretty, good. So far pretty good. This is mine to lose. In the end, I'm just impressed that the company that delivers my dog food and Nespresso pods had a more peaceful transfer of power than the United States government. Oh, speaking of which, I have seen my shadow. And I predict we're going to have at least two more weeks of impeachment because this morning, House Democrats released their trial brief, which argues the former president is singularly responsible for the violence and destruction that unfolded in our seat of government on January 6th as he summoned a mob to Washington, exhorted them into a frenzy, and aimed them like a loaded cannon down Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, they were in a frenzy, and by the look of it, some of them were clearly loaded. Now, the brief opens with a, a simple timeline 
of the facts. The president refuses to accept the results of the 2020 election. The president incites insurrectionists to attack the Capitol. Insurrectionists incited by the president attack the Capitol. The president is derelict of duty during the attack. Okay, that checks out. He is a derelict, and they smeared the Capitol with duty. This afternoon, the former president's lawyers put out their official response to the Democrats' impeachment charges. And they proved themselves top legal minds by addressing the filing to members of the United States Senate. Yes, the United States Senate, both Republicans and Democrats. <laughs> United States. The disgraced former president's team argued that he cannot be convicted by the Senate because he is no longer in office. So, okay, once you leave a job, you're immune from prosecution? Cannibalism? Nice try, Your Honor. But I don't even work at White Castle anymore. But the president, oh, so good. Right time of night, right time of night, man. <laughs> Steamed, onions, all is forgiven. But the president's defenders go beyond legal arguments. They don't even want there to be a trial. Take impeachment lawyer and sea captain who runs a hedge fund, David Schoen. House managers like Eric Swalwell have said that they're going to use news footage of the riot to prove their case. Sharon believes that's a bad idea for America. We know now, apparently, that Mr. Swalwell and the other managers tend to show videotapes of the riots and people calling in, people being hurt, police officers talking. Why does the country need that now? We need to heal now. We need to move forward. Yes, healing comes from not providing any evidence. As it says in the Hippocratic Oath, first... Snitches get stitches. Sharon's not the only one who wants an evidence-free trial. So does South Carolina senator and spokesmodel for the Jowl Brazier, <laughs> Lindsey Graham. Lindsey was on the Fox News, and he had a warning for House impeachment managers. To my Democratic colleagues, if you vote to call one witness, none were called in the House, get ready for a long trial. But if you open up that can of worms, we'll want the FBI to come in and tell us about how people actually pre-planned these attacks and what happened with the security footprint at the Capitol. You open up Pandora's box if you call one witness. That's true. That's true, Lindsay. Yes, it is a slippery slope to information. You can always tell who the good guys are. They're the ones saying, make sure there are no witnesses. Graham's not worried about tearing the country apart. He's worried about the split in the Republican Party. You see, there's this little fringe group in the party who believes it's wrong to attack the Capitol building. And they're focusing their anger on Georgia representative and woman Zoom calling from the outhouse, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Greene's a public backer of QAnon. She's claimed that mass shootings, including school shootings, were staged, and she has supported the execution of Democratic leaders. So a moderate Republican. And yesterday, Green's views inspired a strong reaction from Senate Minority Leader and Bodies Exhibit Reject, Mitch McConnell. McConnell released a statement saying that the baseless conspiracy theories Green supports are cancer for the Republican Party and our country. Yes, it's cancer, but I will point out that five years ago, the GOP found a suspicious lump and then nominated the tumor for president. McConnell kept tearing into Green, calling her beliefs loony lies. You, you, you also might remember loony lies as the short-lived classic cartoon starring Porky Pig. But eat, but eat, but eat, FDR eats babies, folks. There is so much division in the Republican Party. They, they really need a man of true integrity to unite them. Unfortunately, all they've got is House Minority Leader and Mayor assuring the town the beach is mostly shark-free, Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy has resisted calls from Democrats to kick Green off her House committees. Instead, he's promised to have a conversation with her about the mounting controversies sometime this week. Well, that should be productive, as McCarthy proved with his recent trip to Mar-a-Lago, he knows how to put his foot down and his knee down, then his other knee down, so he can smooch some crazy butt. McConnell's not the only one upset with the conspiracy wing of the GOP. Yesterday, 
We found out that roughly 60 to 70 former Bush officials have decided to leave the party. And as one put it, the Republican Party as I knew it no longer exists. Yes, it's unrecognizable. We just had a Republican president who told over 30,000 lies about serious subjects like election fraud and a global pandemic. The previous Republican president only told lies about small stuff like weapons of mass destruction and government-sanctioned torture. Though I admit, both men were obsessed with yellow cake. I'm surprised these people are surprised. Now, we've all been doing this job for a while now, and we've seen a lot of evidence that this kind of behavior from Republicans was coming. Take former Bush advisor and parboiled American Karl Rove. Back when Rove was in the White House, he sarcastically referred to his critics as the reality-based community and claimed that people like him create our own reality, a reality in which I will point out he chose to be Karl Rove. Now, when Rove said that, we all saw where this is headed. Because if that Republican administration could get away with creating their own little space-time continuum with the magic of make-believe, it just goes to figure that it was only a matter of time before everybody else did it. It's just like the hedge fund bros getting mad at people on Reddit. They're not upset that someone's making up some artificially inflated value to game the market. They're just offended that people who aren't in their country club are allowed to play now. So when it comes to crazy conspiracy theories, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. And not just because those same Republicans 13 years ago were fine with rumors that the genie was a secret Muslim. Remember secret Muslim? That was 2007, along with Obama was born in Kenya and the terrorist fist bump, now known as the only way we're allowed to touch each other. So if crazy conspiracy theories are, in fact, a cancer on the Republican Party. People like Mitch McConnell and Karl Rove have spent the last 20 years selling cigarettes to their base. They told millions of people that if they consumed their alternate reality, they'd be this. Now they're acting all shocked that instead they look like this. Speaking of which, every day we learn more details about the Capitol rioters. And every once in a while, these details are just so plain. Dumb. According to records obtained by CNN so far, at least eight of the people facing criminal charges for their involvement in the events at the Capitol did not vote. Well, got to admit, sedition is a lot easier than voting. Uh, you don't have to register. Uh, you don't have to wait in line. You're not risking jury duty. And you still get a cute little sticker. We've got a great show for you tonight. My guests, as I said before, are Zendaya and Father James Martin. But when we return, meanwhile, stick around.